Okay, I know I usually have some kind of funny clip or a big kill streak at the beginning of these videos, but instead I wanted to show you this clip because I want you to tell me if you've ever seen anything more satisfying in TF2. So I'm falling back because we're getting absolutely surrounded on second. They're really following up on the momentum from the first cab. There's power classes everywhere, and Mr. Big Shot here with his direct hit is about to put a stop to my escape, but I just, oh, perfectly track almost all of my syringes. He's hemorrhaging health, and my only regret with this clip is that I didn't get the final blow. But hey, if hitting someone with one rocket as an air shot is impressive, then like 20 syringes should be even more impressive. All right, that's it for the clip. We'll move forward with your regularly scheduled video now. But first, a word from our sponsor. If you're anything like me, your tiny monkey brain is pleased by the sight of giant robots beating the hell out of each other. And that's why you should download today's sponsored game, Mech Arena. Mech Arena is the third person shooter mobile game where you take control of your own roster of mechs. When you join in, you're put into a short, fast-paced match, and you have options like Team Deathmatch or Control Points, which is somewhere between Arena Mode and Control Points in TF2. Each game lasts a short, clean 5 minutes or less, so it's perfect to pick up and play whenever you have even the smallest bit of downtime. The maps are small enough to ensure you're pretty much always going to be in a fight or securing a point, so you can easily wipe out the other team to secure a victory. You know, I think what's really missing in TF2 is for the medic to have a mortar launcher. The game just launched globally, and there's a big celebration event that gives you daily rewards for the first week, so give it a look. Now I know you're all TF2 fans, and that means you love three things. Hearing the same joke over and over again, free games, and cosmetics. Well, you're in luck, Steam username Engineer Gaming, because not only is this game completely free to play, if you use the link provided in the description and in the pinned comment, you'll get 70,000 credits, 500 A-coins, and the star of the show, a cosmetic mil-spec skin. Add me to your friends list with my username that you can see on screen here, and we can play some matches together, and I'll hard carry you by getting a triple kill on mid. Yeah, I'm just that good. So go out there and download Mech Arena through the link, and tell them Fish sent ya. And now back to the video. Welcome to Bad Weapon Academy, where we take a look at the worst weapons TF2 has to offer, and I show you how to best utilize them. Let me ask you something. Have you ever seen this medic? This absolute dipshit running around with the stock syringe gun, pretending he's an actual combat class because the in-game tutorials gave him zero indication of how the class is actually played? Yeah, I was that medic once. My first ever actual match of TF2. I went to CP Coldfront and saw we didn't have a medic, so that's what I went. I had no idea what I was doing and ended up firing off my syringe gun like an absolute moron. My teammates were less than happy with me. He is just multi retarded. He is just shooting with the fucking the the medic uh, the syringe gun. Just figuring it's just not working. This slightly traumatic experience ensured beyond all doubt that I would never be a medic main. It also reinforced an idea in my head: the stock syringe gun fucking sucks. But interestingly. That also extends to all the other syringe gun style medic primary weapons. Oh, but the Blutsauger isn't that bad. Oh, the Overdose is really underrated. Listen, the Blutsauger and Overdose aren't that bad when compared to the stock syringe gun. They're like C tier weapons overall, stock is floating around low D tier, and then way up here, that's where you find the only medic primary actually worth using. The Crusader's Crossbow. One option overshadowing the others in the same slot is nothing new for TF2 or even for games in general, but this is a unique case. So what exactly has gone wrong here? Why do the syringe guns suck so bad? Well, to find that out, we need to go back in time. Strap yourselves in. We're heading back to 1996. <laughs> Nineteen ninety six. Bill Clinton's in office, the Macarena is still unironically being listened to, and id Software is high off the success of the Wolfenstein and Doom franchises, and comes out with Quake. In that game, two parts of your iconic loadout are the nail gun and the super nail gun. These fired physical projectiles rather than hit scan, similar to the plasma gun, rocket launcher, and BFG from Doom before it. 
These two weapons became staples of not only campaign use for their high DPS, but also in multiplayer, and eventually in the mod that would become Team Fortress. Years down the line, the trailer for Team Fortress 2 releases, and we see the return of the nail gun with the scout, but the game comes out and the nail gun is nowhere to be seen. The only remnant of the nail gun's legacy is this, the medic's primary weapon, the syringe gun. Does it hold up to its nail gun and super nail gun forefather? No, none of them do. Let's talk about why. Okay, so all syringe guns fire at a rate of 10 rounds per second, have 40 rounds in the clip, fire projectiles with a speed of 1000 hammer units per second, and have a 1.5 second reload. The damage of the stock and blutsauger projectiles ranges from 12 at point blank range to 5 at maximum fall off. Meaning, assuming all shots hit at point blank, you can achieve a DPS of 120 with this. The only syringe gun with any difference in damage is the overdose, which has a 15% damage penalty which is basically nothing. At point blank range this comes out to a difference of 2 damage per shot, and at long range, 1 damage. The benefit of the overdose is that it increases your movement speed based on the percentage of your uber charge, up to a 20% increase at max charge, making the medic nearly as fast as a scout. However, this effect is only active when the overdose is the active weapon. The Blutsauger, meanwhile, returns 3 health to you for every needle hit on an enemy, but reduces your self-healing by 2 a second. In every other way though, it's identical to the stock syringe gun. Okay, what's all this come out to? Well, if you look at the rate of fire and damage, you'll see that the syringe gun and the sniper's SMG are very similar. Almost identical, actually. The only difference is that the SMG suffers from worse falloff, but it's a pretty negligible difference. I was actually surprised to find this out because I've always felt like the SMG is way stronger. Why is that? Is it just personal experience because I've used it a lot more? Well, it comes down to a couple things. One, hitscan versus projectiles. While the two weapons have the same rate of fire and similar damage, the DPS is actually going to be different thanks to this factor, since the syringes have travel time. So while your 10 rounds a second are instantly hitting your target with the SMG, with the syringe gun, each dart actually has to reach the target. The second is that travel time. 1000 hammer units per second puts the needles among the slowest projectiles in the game. Only uncharged sticky bombs are any slower, and uncharged sticky bombs still do what can generously be called fuckloads of damage. Also, they arc like a motherfucker. Compared to other arcing projectiles like grenades or flares, it feels like you have to compensate for the arcing a lot more. Maybe the medic filled the syringes with lead to poison people, but all it did was weigh the needles down? I don't know. The slow projectile speed in arc means you'll end up needing to compensate for your aim on both axes, and I find that aiming off to the side of whichever direction your enemy is going in is a good way to do that. You pretty much never want to aim dead center at the enemy, unless they're either standing perfectly still, or else running directly towards you with no horizontal movement. Another issue is that their nature as projectile weapons means, yes, your teammates will eat them, and unlike with the crossbow, that's not a good thing. Since you tend to hang around other teammates as a medic, you're most often going to find yourself in a situation where your teammates jump in front of you as you try to defend yourself, and instead only succeed in impeding your self-defense by eating all your syringes. I still hate this shit just as much as I do with the Pompson. Finally, the spread. If you're not breathing down your opponent's neck, you're likely going to be missing a lot of your shots, so even though your clip size is nearly double that of the SMG, you'll be putting out about the same or less damage because there's just a lot more to account for. With the SMG, you point and shoot, and the skill in it mainly comes down to tracking. With the syringe gun, you have to point, shoot, track with projectiles, account for their speed, account for their arc, die. So not only does it feel worse than its nail gun predecessors because the nail gun fucking hurts, but it also feels worse than the secondary for a long range class, despite having similar stats, and a very similar last resort self defense role, and shit dude it even feels worse than the pistol. Now I'm not stupid, I know why this is, it's for the sake of balance. Medic is already the strongest class in the game without question. This isn't even up for debate. Please fight me, Sniper's overpowered crowd. It will be extremely funny to read your comments, and I could use a laugh. 
Anyways, giving Medic a means of doing decent, reliable damage on top of his ability to heal players would make him pretty ridiculous, and more importantly, it would discourage newer players from even healing people in the first place, because why bother when you could just kill them? AKA, the thought process that goes through most people's minds when they decide not to pick Medic on the startup screen. But then you factor in the crossbow, which can not only kill people, but pretty well and from a distance, because it shoots straight, has reverse damage fall off, has a projectile more than twice as fast as a rocket, and perhaps most importantly, it reloads passively. This is such a huge deal for not only being able to do insane burst heals and clutch arrows, but also for rapidly switching between the crossbow and medigun without losing any time to a reload if you need to heal someone or defend yourself. It's like Doom Eternal quick switching but with healing people, it's fucking insane. The biggest shortcoming of the crossbow is that at close range, it really isn't that great, only dealing 38 damage at point blank, which is barely more than three point blank syringes. However, medics rather infamously have another very reliable point blank self-defense option. Isn't the domino effect this fucking mechanic has on game balance so cool? Anyway, the point of this is that the syringe guns kind of need to suck for medic to be balanced, but then the crossbow, objectively, does not suck. But there's a huge problem here. The crossbow is really fucking fun. God damn, I love using this thing. Getting those cross the map heals, clutching it to save a teammate from certain death, hitting an enemy with that long range fadeaway, and blinding my teammates with candy canes and spawn. Without the crossbow, I don't think Medic would be nearly as fun. It's such a bizarre case where this thing is totally overpowered, but it also just kind of feels right. Like, I don't think anyone would want to see it nerfed because it's just awesome to use on a class that not many people want to play to begin with, and it's not even particularly unfair or unfun to fight. Sure, it can feel like you've been cheated out of a kill when the medic hits that crossbow shot, but is that really any different than fighting someone who's overhealed? And it takes real skill on the part of the medic to hit those shots, especially on someone who's trying to move out of the way of the enemy's attacks. I can't fault the weapon for that. The crossbow feels like the primary the medic should have started with in the first place. This leaves the syringes in an awkward state, where they serve the purpose of teaching new players not to run around shooting people with their primary, only for this totally awesome primary to come along and say, just kidding, shooting people with your primary fucking rules and it doesn't even matter which team they're on. But what if you want to break the rules and run around with the primaries that aren't so awesome? Are the syringe guns viable at all when the alternative is so stacked against them that it changes the class's entire playstyle? Well, in some cases, I would say yes. The main draw of the syringe guns is close range self-defense and sustainability. You don't really want to be on the offensive with these weapons. For starters, because the damage isn't all that great, and for seconds, because running forward with them actually kind of makes them worse by limiting their range and forcing you to compensate for their arcing even more. By using them while backpedaling, you effectively increase their range and it's generally more useful to use them while retreating in the first place, especially against enemies that tend to walk forwards like Pyros, Demo Knights, and the occasional Scout who's not all that great at being a Scout. Typically, the more choke-heavy the map, the better they'll be, since it gives you less margin for error while trying to hit your targets. Large, open maps like Swiftwater probably won't be as fun as something more enclosed like Barn Blitz. And just like Obi-Wan Kenobi taught us, the high ground is your friend here. But the low ground is also your friend like that. One time it worked out for him there, cause, uh, because the arcing is so extreme, if you find a sloped incline or decline, you can volley syringes over it and do some decent damage without even requiring a line of sight on the enemy. And hell, if your team is decently set up where you're doing this, you might even be able to bait some enemies into an ambush, thinking they have a free kill on a moronic medic. These aspects apply to all of the syringe guns, but what about the unlocks? What do they specialize in? Well, I'd say the Blutsauger is definitely the strongest of the bunch, as it's the most rewarding and can actually save your ass in a pinch. If it's not the strongest, then it's certainly my favorite to use. The damage and fire rate is the same as stocks, but you get the benefit of heals on hit, which encourages you to be more aggressive as you can now take more hits than normal as long as you continue to dish out good damage. This is generally known as the Battle Medic, and unlike Battle NG, it's basically a complete meme that only ever works against bad teams, or if you have another medic willing to pick up your slack. Because remember, if you have your syringe gun out, 
you're not healing your teammates, you're not building uber charge, and that can be a massive detriment. But in situations where your team sucks ass anyways and can barely defend themselves, much less you, it's a solid pick if you're good with it. Being able to increase your sustainability as medic is more important than it is for, you know, every other class in the entire game. So being able to do that and damage enemies is a real bonus. The same principle applies to the Overdose, but much less aggressive and much more Sonic the Hedgehog. What I said about the syringe guns being good against Pyros applies tenfold to the Blutsauger, as it can pretty easily deal with Pyros while minimizing how much damage you take from fire. Though flares will still suck, as your self-healing won't be able to do much against Afterburn if you're not able to heal yourself. I usually enjoy using the Quick Fix anytime I run the Blutsauger, because the Quick Fix is usually the metagun I use when I don't trust my teammates to stay alive in the first place, which is exactly what the Blutsauger is great for anyway. Also, if you want to offset the healing penalty, you could pair it with the Amputator. Just keep in mind you will need to have the Amputator out to get the healing bonus, but that can actually work in your benefit if you need to heal a bunch of teammates in a pinch with your taunt. Depending on just how aggressive you want to be, it may also be a good idea to equip the Solemn Vow so you can see the health of your enemies and make informed picks or know when you're not going to win a fight so you can get out while you can. The Solemn Vow works out really well for the syringe guns in general, actually. I was surprised by how many situations I find myself getting kills because I knew for a fact the enemy I was facing wasn't going to be much of a threat assuming I hit my shots properly. Objectively, it lets you know exactly what fights you can take, but psychologically, it almost encourages you to take those fights to begin with and hypes you up. Speaking of running while you can, the Overdose may as well be a straight upgrade to the stock syringe gun, but that's not saying much. I'd argue this is the choice for the more paranoid medics. If you always have a sneaking suspicion that your patient is going to instantly die right when you're about to have full uber, the overdose is for you. It's the ultimate escape tool for medics who might need just that little bit of extra speed to get them out of a jam, and the penalty for using it really isn't that big a deal, meaning it effectively has no downsides. And this has much more use outside of escape, although that's a huge part of it. Like other movement enhancing items such as the Power Jack or the Babyface's Blaster, you can use it to clear jumps you couldn't before, surf farther, and increase the range of your syringes even further with backpedaling. This does mean you can't be as aggressive however, but if your uber is high enough that the speed boost is making a real difference, then it's probably a bad idea to run towards the enemy to begin with. The best choices to pair with this are obviously the mediguns that give you faster uber charges. So the Kritzkrieg, Quick Fix, and Vaccinator are easy go-tos. The Uber Saw is also an easy pick, not just because it's objectively the best medic melee, but also because getting an extra 25% in a single swing can give you a pretty nice speed boost. The Solemn Vow is also a decent choice for the same reason as the Blutsauger, but you're probably better off going with the Uber Saw since you'll want to be less aggressive with this one. I should mention a hidden downside of the movement speed buff, and that's muscle memory. Keeping track of your own speed and movement is just as important as keeping track of your enemies, and when that's constantly changing as a result of your uber building up and draining over the course of the round, it can take more adjustments than usual if you want to actually secure some kills with this thing. I found it to be far more useful for the utility aspect rather than its combat effectiveness. But then we come to the stock syringe gun, the ugly stub title of the bunch, and the only stock weapon that's getting featured on this series. That means it has to be really bad, right? I mean, let's be real, there's never a good reason to use this thing. It pretty much only serves as a pair of training wheels for mags who need to learn that they're not supposed to be attacking people. But hold on, speaking of training wheels, you know that episode of Samurai Jack where he meets the monkey people who teach him how to jump good by weighing him down until he can jump normally with the weights and jump good without them? That's what the syringe gun is for. You train yourself by handicapping yourself, and once you use the options that actually have benefits to using them, those become even stronger. With zero benefit to holding it, and none for hitting people outside of dealing damage either, you are relying solely on your skills to get yourself out of a jam, and improving your skills much more rapidly than you would if you had some kind of benefit like the Blutsucker's healing or the Overdose's escape utility. You don't have a choice in the matter. With the stock syringe gun, you either get good or you die. Meaning the stock syringe gun is the Dark Souls of TF2 weapon. It's also not bad for playing mind games and baiting the shit out of people. If they see some dipshit medic with the stock syringe gun shooting at them, they're gonna think, oh wow, free kill, nice, and then walk forward into either a sentry nest or into the crosshairs of a medic that actually does know how to aim the syringe gun. Oh yeah, and I just realized I forgot to mention MVM. Uh, yeah, they're actually fucking amazing in this. Unlike the base game, 
when you shoot enemies with the syringes, you're doing more than just damaging them. If you buy the Mad Milk syringes upgrade for a very reasonable 200 credits, you also help your teammates heal themselves all at once. And the spray and pray nature of the syringes means you don't just coat one robot with milk, you can coat a whole bunch of them with a single volley. If you want my take on which is the best for MVM, I'd say it's the overdose. Because you're going to have full uber for longer periods of time as you wait for the right moment to pop your crits, and because you can upgrade your uber build rate to go up even faster than the crits creeks base 25% increase, you can zip around the map and get out of hairy situations very often. You could use the Blutsauger if you want to stack up the heal on hit with the Mad Milk to go ultra battle medic, but if you ask me, the overdose is your best bet here. And yeah, the stock is still the worst. And that about wraps up the syringe guns. Unfortunately, they didn't live up to their nail gun ancestors in terms of power, but I think they're still smiling down from Quake Heaven, waiting for the inevitable Quake reboot so that they can be reborn into this world. What a strange case. The uselessness of the syringe guns comes down to the fact that the crossbow completely overshadows them. But the crossbow is also fucking awesome, and I wouldn't want to nerf that just so the syringe guns feel artificially more powerful. But at the same time, I really don't know how to buff them without making Medic too strong. Maybe you could double their damage but have their clip size so they do more respectable damage with each syringe while still not being a great damage dealing option. It would be kind of akin to a scout whose primary is a pistol. Oh, right. It's not like anywhere near 40 needles actually fit inside this thing anyway. Also, isn't it kind of weird how when he reloads, he just puts new juice in this little chamber, and the needles don't actually get replaced because they never actually get fired? Why isn't the cylinder getting reloaded? Also, why is the crossbow the only one that can be festive or festivized? What the fuck's the deal with that? Anyway, that's it for now. The crossbow is still king as far as medic's primaries go, but for now, go out there and give the enemy team autism with your vaccines, and tell them fish sent ya. This heavy, man. All right. It's time to give him the old one, two. Oh wait, there's five people on the cart. Oh! <laughs> man became the Crockett. That is the best Caber Knight kill I've ever gotten in my life. Oh my god!